Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Turkish stuffed eggplant. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make carne yarek. Although in the spirit of full disclosure, I only found out this dish existed like an hour before I started filming. And I didn't really use a recipe and only did about 15 minutes of research. But despite all that, these came out amazingly well. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, the name actually translates to split bellies, which as you can see, or at least we'll see, is a very accurate name. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our eggplant. And for this, you're gonna need four equally sized, hopefully male eggplant. And no, eggplants really don't have genders, but when you're buying these, what you wanna look for is eggplant that have small round indentations versus larger, longer slot-like indentations, which tend to have more seeds. So when you're choosing these, remember, you want dots, not slots. And to prep these, what we'll do is pull off the leaves. And then what we'll do next is take our peeler and make exactly four peels equally spaced apart. And this is not just for appearance's sake. Okay, these equally spaced peels are one of the keys to the whole operation. And that's because the peel on the bottom is going to help these sit flat. And the peel on the top is eventually where we're going to split our bellies. And what we'll do once that's been accomplished all four is go ahead and transfer those into this baking dish into which I brushed in a little bit of olive oil. And then what we're gonna do is pop these into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour or until they just start to soften. Okay, we don't want them too firm, but we also don't want them totally collapsing. So when they're done, they should look a little something like this and they should feel sort of soft and spongy, but they should not be collapsing when we press them. All right, we're not trying to make baba ganoush here. And then because I probably should have done it when they went in the oven, I decided to brush these with a little bit of olive oil to kind of shine up the outside. And then what we're going to do is let these sit until they're cool enough to handle, at which point we will honor the name and split the bellies. And what we can do while those are cooling is go ahead and make our filling, which I'm going to start by sauteing a large onion in some olive oil in this skillet set over medium high heat. And as usual, we'll add a nice big pinch of salt. And usually we'll saute these onions until they just start to turn translucent. But here my instincts told me to go a little bit further, until these onions not only softened and started to turn translucent, but also until they started to take on a little bit of golden brown color. All right, for whatever reason, I just thought these should have a little more of a sweeter profile. So that's what I did. I cooked those stirring over medium high heat until they looked a little something like this. At which point I'm gonna add a pound of ground lamb. And you know the drill. Once we add our meat, we're gonna sort of break it up with our spatula into nice small pieces. And we'll continue doing that until it's as fine as we want, and it eventually starts to brown up. And even though I'm using lamb here, I believe beef is also a popular choice. And as far as the technique goes, I really think you could do this with any ground meat. Except, ironically, turkey. I just don't think it has enough fat for something like this. But anyway, no matter what we're using, we'll go ahead and brown up our meat. At which point we'll add most of the rest of the ingredients. Including some crushed or finely minced garlic. Some freshly ground black pepper a little touch of ground cumin, or cumin. I also wanted to sneak in a little touch of cinnamon, which I think is always amazing with lamb. Anyway, we will continue on with a touch of cayenne, as well as a pinch of dry rosemary. And speaking of herb, I believe traditionally we're supposed to use some freshly chopped parsley in this, but that didn't happen. And then we will finish this up with a squeeze of tomato paste, which I think you should always buy in tube form, since we typically just need a little bit at a time. And then last but not least, a generous application of salt. Okay, rule of thumb, about a teaspoon per pound of meat. And then, of course, we will adjust from there. And we'll go ahead and stir all that together and cook that for about two minutes to sort of wake up our spices, at which point we can add and stir in our last major ingredient. And that would be a whole bunch of diced sweet and or hot chili peppers. And I used a combination of Anaheim, Poblano, and Fresno. Okay, so I went with an array of mild, medium, and hot. But whatever you're into is gonna work, including some just regular old basic bell peppers. And all we're gonna do here is cook this for a few more minutes until those peppers just barely get tender. Okay, keep in mind, this mixture is gonna cook once we stuff it into the eggplant and it bakes. So we probably don't want our peppers disintegrating at this point. So I just cook mine for about three or four minutes, at which point we're simply gonna turn off the heat and let this cool down for about 10 minutes or so before adding the final optional ingredient a handful of finely grated sheep's milk cheese. Okay, I forget the exact name of the one I used since Michelle bought it, but it was very similar to Pecorino. And once that's been stirred in, our filling is basically done. 
Although if you're a real pro, of course you're going to taste this and adjust for seasoning. And then assuming our eggplants are now cool enough to handle, we can go ahead and split these bellies by cutting directly through the middle of that part we peeled on the top. But don't go all the way through to the bottom. All right, maybe just like three quarters of the way. And then using two spoons, we can kind of pull that apart, which is going to give us plenty of space to stuff in our filling. And by the way, if it's cool enough, this is probably easier if you use your fingers. Unless, of course, you're trying to use a camera and a tripod. Then the spoons are probably easier. And by the way, one of my four eggplant was female and did have more seeds. So there you go. And I did scoop some of them out, since they can tend to be a little bit bitter. But anyway, we're going to split and spread open the bellies of our eggplant, at which point we can spoon in our filling. And I actually considered sprinkling some salt on the inside before filling these, but I thought my lab mixture had enough. Although in hindsight, it didn't. And I could have used a touch more. So something to keep in mind. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and fill these as evenly as possible. And as we do, we kind of want to press it in and pack it down. But be careful, don't do it too hard. Otherwise, these could burst open. And then once stuffed, I decided to decorate the top with some extra pepper strips, which is something I noticed a few people doing during my exhaustive few minutes of research. But of course, this step is optional, so you decide. I mean, you are, after all, the Nelly Furtado of your split belly's bravado. But I did have some extra peppers, and I do think it makes it look nicer, if not more aerodynamic. I wonder how you say racing stripes in Turkish. But anyway, we'll decorate those as we so choose. And then I finish the tops with a little drizzle of olive oil, because it felt right. And then one last thing before we bake these. I'm going to pour in about a cup of chicken broth, so everything stays nice and moist. And we'll have a little something-something to spoon over later. And that's it. These are now ready to pop back into our 400-degree oven for about 45 minutes or so, or until our eggplant is very soft and tender. Okay, it's really gonna depend on the size, so be sure to give it the old poke poke with a knife to check. And that should pierce the flesh with virtually no resistance. And if it doesn't, put them back in, but mine were perfectly tender. So I went ahead and served up and spooned down some of those drippings. And that, my friends, for a first attempt, did not look too bad. And I'm happy to report the taste and texture were also really good. All right, I'll probably tweak a few things the next time I make them. Like, for example, salting the inside a little. But my eggplant was beautifully tender and creamy, and the filling very flavorful. Although I've since learned since filming, I was supposed to serve this with rice and yogurt sauce. So I will definitely be trying it that way next time. And probably whip up a batch of our tzatziki sauce. But anyway, all in all, I thought this was very successful. And not just this specific recipe, but the technique in general. Right, as I was enjoying this, I thought up a couple dozen variations I'd love to try. Again, none of which involve turkey. But anyway, that's it. My attempt at making carne arak. It's always a lot of fun trying a new recipe for a lot of reasons. First and foremost is that there's really no pressure it has to come out great. And it really is always more enjoyable to cook without fear. Okay, we should all do that more often. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little more research. And maybe pick up a few tips in the comment section. But in the meantime, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.